test is a glimpse into the extraordinary world of steam power on the railways of northern China in 1998. China was on the cusp of an economic explosion that would see the rollout of the world's most extensive high-speed rail network within 25 years. But this was 1998, and China had only stopped building steam locomotives in around 1995. And here is the evidence. A locomotive built in the Tangshan Railway Works northeast of Beijing in 1995. It was a cancelled order that was never delivered. It became the works pilot and wasn't even given its final paint job. In a limestone quarry in the western suburbs of Beijing, 080 steam engines were still at work. There was evidence of various mishaps within this narrow gauge industrial railway system, but perhaps the most surprising thing was the ability of these clumsy 080 locos to stay on the tracks. In the steelworks 200 kilometers to the east of Beijing, steam locos were still in exclusive charge of shunting duties.
Tesco's shunted the torpedo wagons carrying molten iron from the foundry to the steelworks. full of slack are shunted out of the foundry. In the nearby Tangshan coal mine, Workers toil in an industrial landscape full of grime and coal dust, while the 282 steam locos are busy.
cab ride on the coal miners train, seen here stabled at the platform, is an insight into a working industrial railway. The crew are not volunteers on a preservation railway in the west, but engine men in China in the dying days of steam power on the world's railways. miners are dropped off and the engine shunts around the train for the return trip. a signal check on the way back. Note how the driver uses both the train brake and the locomotive brake as he slows down. Miners arrive back after a routine day in the working lives of this crew of regular Chinese steam locomotive enginemen. Tongliao is a city in eastern Inner Mongolia that is an important railway hub. Back in 1998, it was also home to a busy steam locomotive depot which maintained an impressive fleet of QJ-class steam locomotives. 
These engines became the primary mainline freight locomotives on the Chinese National Rail Network by the 1980s. They weigh in at over 130 tonnes and their 2102 wheel arrangement gives them a pulling power, known as tractive effort, of 63,000 pounds force. The equivalent loco on British railways was the 9F2100 freight loco, one of the most powerful steam locomotives ever built for British railways. This weighed in at around 85 tonnes and 40,000 pounds force tractive effort. In other words, the Chinese QJs are one and a half times heavier and over one and a half times more powerful than their British equivalent. The last steam locomotive built for British railways was the 9F, named Evening Star. It was built in 1960 and withdrawn from service in 1968. The Chinese QJs were manufactured from 1956 until 1988 and although steam traction officially ended on the Chinese National Rail Network in 2002, this is 1998 and the Tongliao fleet of QJs are still in their prime. They have massive 12 wheel tenders for coal and water and are equipped with air horns and steam powered electricity generators for electric lighting in the cab and for their powerful headlamps. Coal is still king in China and even the mechanical shovel loading coal in the locomotive depot is steam powered. By 1998 many QJs have been acquired by the regional Jitong Railway in Inner Mongolia which operates around 100 units over the 945 kilometer route between Tongliao and Jining. The QJs are operating not only freight trains but local passenger trains around Inner Mongolia over the Jitong Railway. Carriages for these local passenger trains are also coal fired. The restaurant car uses coal fired griddles for cooking. The carriages use coal-fired Chalusi boilers for hot water for the onboard catering. The Goloshi boilers provide steam for the carriage heating system, relieving the steam locomotive of the extra load for carriage steam heating. The Jitong Railway passes through the more remote areas of northern China, which in 1998 are still unaffected by the economic miracle underway in the more prosperous provinces to the south. A ride on these backwaters of the Chinese railway network are experiences that Paul Thoreau, Colin Thurbron and other travel writers will eulogize about in their novels. In this hinterland of northern China, in 1998, there is also the opportunity of a cab ride on a QJ after dark.
The Jitong Railway is an anachronism. It was only opened in 1995 and is built to a high civil engineering standard, featuring extensive use of tunnels and viaducts to reduce the ruling gradients over the hilly terrain. Yet in 1998 it uses steam power and semaphore signalling. The rationale for this is that the plentiful supply of coal from local mines in Inner Mongolia and the availability of steam locos, made redundant by dieselization and electrification programs elsewhere in China, makes steam operation economic sense to reduce the start-up costs of the new line. This confluence of economic forces has resulted in a serendipity effect a brand new railway line with trains often powered by double-headed steam locomotives. The Jitong Railway in 1998 is the last mainline railway in the world to use steam locomotives. It is a harsh, barren landscape where life is still unaffected by the economic revolution unfolding further south. Here, in the outer reaches of the motherland, the locals seem open and welcoming and the harsh realities of everyday life have not changed. <coughs>
around halfway between Tongliao and Jining, the Jitong Railway traverses a mountainous area, and the line has a summit at the Jingpeng Pass above the local town of Reshui. These are the sights and sounds of steam traction across the Jingpeng Pass on the Jitong Railway of Inner Mongolia in 1998.